Take a good look at this frame in front of you right now and notice what you see. Swanky custom camper van, beautiful natural landscape, guy on the internet who looks like he might have it all figured out. This frame is something that I've used on this channel many times. And from this frame, you might be given to assume the things that I might have led you to assume. That I am a nomadic creator who's living the ideal version of a picture-perfect life on the road. And for a while, that might have been true. But today, things are a little bit different. And I want to peel back the facade and show you the van is pretty much empty right now. There's no clothes in the wardrobe, no cameras in the gear cabinet, and there isn't even a functioning water system in here right now. And that's because I quit. For the last three years, five months, and four days, I've portrayed a very deliberate slice of my life on this channel. That of the vagabond creative, gallivanting around the Pacific US, making photos, and sharing his experience. I felt like if I positioned myself that way, maybe people would care what I had to share. I strived to create each of my videos with a new and exciting backdrop, even if my life was neither new or exciting at the time. But all of that is now coming to an end. This is the point where I would say that I'm quitting full-time van life, but that wouldn't be entirely honest. The truth is that my van life journey has never truly been a full-time endeavor. At its best, it was heavily punctuated by time spent with my girlfriend, my family, and my friends. My longest solo stint on the road was only a couple months long, and I never really went more than a few thousand miles from home. I used to think that when this moment came, it would feel like a defeat, like I wasn't cut out for the lifestyle and that I had failed. But by cross-examining my own experiences with those of my fellow van dwellers, I realized that it wasn't me that failed, but that the lifestyle had failed many of us, and that it was riddled with problems that could make anyone quit, things that you don't really hear about when looking at it from the outside. But before we talk about that, I want to show you something exciting. Gustave Flaubert once said, be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. But for the last four years, my life has been anything but regular and orderly. But as you can see by the scenery, I'm looking to change that. Welcome to my home studio here in Bend, Oregon, where I've decided to establish a home base. I've spent a lot of time in Oregon over the last few years. My girlfriend lives here. I have a lot of friends here. My family is from Oregon and I got Oregon blood in my veins. My mom is from a town called Corvallis, just on the other side of the Cascade Range. And this state has always felt like a second home to me. And now it is home, which is super exciting. I'm living here now with my girlfriend of almost four years and one of our best friends. And together we've been moved in just about a month. Merry Christmas. This is one of the upstairs bedrooms, but we've also got a nice little backyard and a three car garage, one of the bays of which I'm trying to turn into a little workshop, which might actually end up being ground zero for van number two one of these days, because contrary to what this video might have led you to believe, I'm not giving up the van life entirely. In fact, 
By the time this video goes live, Inez and I may very well be embarked on our 4,000 mile long road trip to Texas and back, where we're gonna be making some new photographs, making some stuff for the channel, and both of those I'm really excited about because I have not posted anything on here in over two months, which is way too long. But I've just been too busy with house hunting and moving and all of the things that go along with that. If you know, you know. Um, but it feels really good to be kind of settled here in a dedicated creative space. To quote Chris Howe, I think it was, he said, a studio is an acknowledgement that what you're doing is important enough to deserve its own space. It's very much a work in progress in here, but it finally feels like it's at a point where we're ready to do some real work. And I would love to give you a little tour of what we've got going on so far, if you're cool with that. So coming from the van, I didn't really have any furniture, which is making furnishing this room and this house quite the task. And before I even started house hunting, I knew that I wanted a standing desk. I'm not getting any younger and I was tired of like hunching over non-ergonomic desks or like the table in the van. So when FlexiSpot reached out and wanted to collaborate, the timing could not have been more perfect because I was actually looking at buying one of these. They sent me this, their FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7, and honestly, I love it. It's amazing. I've used other standing desks before, but the E7 just feels like a leg above the competition, which you could take literally if you wanted because the vertical height on this thing maxes out at 49 and a quarter inches, which is insanely tall, way taller than I need. It has this really great keypad that allows you to program different settings into memory for seated and standing positions, and the dual motors that power it are significantly faster and quieter than any other standing desk I've used. The build quality is really top-notch as well. <laughs> when I got the box, I was dumbstruck by how heavy it was, but now that I'm not carrying it up the stairs, I really appreciate how solid and stable it is at all heights. It's also got this really neat cable management tray built in, which is a great plus for keeping everything under the hood nice and tidy. To be 100% honest with you, it is with zero hesitancy that I stand before you and sing the praises of this desk, because I genuinely love it, and I genuinely think that FlexiSpot is out there making really great products. So thank you to FlexiSpot for helping to give my little home studio its centerpiece, and if you're watching and in search of a solid new desk, you're welcome. I just found it for you. If you want to support me, support my sponsors. They're helping to make the work that I do here on this channel possible. So thank you again. And uh, all right, moving on. Let's talk about what else we've got going on over here. So far on my desk, I've got a pretty simple setup going on. I've got my M1 MacBook Pro mounted on a laptop stand next to this 32 inch LG Ultrafine monitor. After editing most of my videos on a laptop these last few years, Having the extra screen real estate is amazing. I've got a little voiceover rig mounted to the desk, which is super convenient. The microphone is a blue Yeti, I think. I don't really know too much about it. My friend loaned it to me because uh, he had it for streaming, but now I'm using it. Uh, it works great, I guess. Under the monitor, I have this little Apple HomePod mini that I was gifted that I'm actually really enjoying. I don't have too many accessories for it yet, but I do like being able to tell it to turn my key light on and off, as well as some of the other lights around here. And then next to that, I have this CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 dock. All of my auxiliary devices like my microphone, NAS, hard drives, and monitor all attach to it, and then I have a simple one cable connection to my Mac. Which, after living a life of dongles and cables everywhere, is just so refreshing. And then you can see, you know, <laughs> strewn across the desk is all a bunch of stuff that doesn't have a home yet. I got my everyday carry items, my point and shoots, my tax documents, etc., etc. I'm sure all of these things will have a home eventually, but right now it's kind of just like the rest of the studio. It's a bit of a sty in here. It's manageable though, I think. And over here in the gear closet, you can see that it is even less put together than the desk area. Super. Right now I just have this Home Depot wire rack with all of my gear and miscellaneous items haphazardly strewn across it. You'll see that one of these shelves is wood and that's because I'm making wood covers for these shelves. I just don't like the way that the wires cause things to tip over, especially my cameras. And it also bows in the middle, which not great. So I'm making wood covers for these. I think it'll make it more functional and it will also make it a little bit prettier. Stoked about that. 
top shelf, I've just got some of my cameras hanging out until I can find them a permanent home. And then on the second shelf, we got this janky charging station, I guess is what you would call that. But on this side, we've got one of the things that I'm most excited to have here in the studio, and that is my new data storage system. I've been shooting videos and photos for the majority of my life, and over the years, the files have just been getting bigger and bigger. A casual shoot with my A7S III that I'm shooting on right now, when transcoded to ProRes 422 HQ for editing, can easily yield 100 gigabytes, oftentimes way more than that. So previously, my solution for managing that was this, this stack of hard drives. And if you're looking at that and thinking, that looks like a pain in the ass, you'd be right. It was this constant mess of just juggling different files, trying to find files, making sure that you have twice as much storage as you need so you can back everything up. No more. Now, everything that was on there is on this, which is a Synology DS1A2 One Plus, which is a NAS. NAS, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a super hard drive. This thing has eight bays, and each one of these bays has a 16 terabyte drive in it. So you total all that up, that's like 128 terabytes or something like that. So 32 terabytes is used for redundancy, and the rest of it, 96 terabytes worth, is storage. So now all of the stuff that was on this is now on here. It's all in one place, which is amazing. And it's got redundancy built in, so it's safer than it's ever been before. So incredibly stoked about that. It was not a fun purchase to make, but I think at this point, it's kind of a necessary one. Moving down a little bit, and it's getting even less organized. Please don't judge me. You can see that this corner is just a bunch of cases and bags shoved into the corner. Ignore that. But on this side, we've got my first dedicated film fridge, which I'm really excited about. If you're a fan of Nick Carver's, you probably recognize this fridge, and that's because it is the exact same one that he uses. He seems like a thorough and well-researched dude, so if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Although I've only had it a day though, so we'll see how it fares. Not even gonna talk about the bottom shelf because that's just chaos and unimportant, but back in this corner here, you can see that I've got all of my tall items, like my tripods, grip gear, light stands, slider case, miscellaneous stuff, so it's good to have a place to store all of that. And then moving further counterclockwise through the room and ignoring the pile and the boxes, you'll see this awesome little couch I found from article on Facebook Marketplace. It was actually brand new and in the box, which is even better. Um, along the windowsill, I've just got candle, journals, Australian incense, because I'm like that. And then in the back here, we got some rolling impact stands. This first one is my key light, which is just the same video light I had in the van, the Godox SL60W. I just put a bigger aperture light dome on it and it's working okay for now. This other one, I'm affectionately calling my Studio Squid. It's not very squid-like yet because it's only got two arms, but the goal here is to put all the things I need to record a video on one stand, like my video, microphone, audio interface, monitor, because this room isn't exactly very big, so maximizing the floor space in here when I'm shooting is important to me. This idea is not one of my own. This is heavily inspired by creators like DSLR Video Shooter and Ryan Cow, but I think the design of this one is gonna be pretty unique. I don't know if you guys are interested in that at all, but let me know if you'd wanna see a detailed breakdown of this in the future when it's fully completed. Super, what about that? Last but certainly not least, this is the only piece of art that is currently hanging up in the studio. This is my Tides photograph from Big Sur. You might recognize it from the intro I did to my video, The Stigma of Editing Your Photography. Having this image printed as a prop for that video is really the only reason why I have it, hence why it's the only thing on the walls. I do have some beautiful pieces of art that have been given to me, and I would really like to make the walls a collage of just different people's art and photographs and things that I admire. And I kind of started a little bit. I picked up this photograph. This is of the Rockies by Matt Santa Marco. If you know him, you know his work is incredible. And if you don't, then you should check him out. What I'm trying to say here is that you should support your fellow creatives and buy the cool stuff that they make. Okay, so that concludes the tour and talking about this next chapter and the things that I'm excited for. But for a moment, I would like to take a step back and talk about what I learned and what you might be able to take away from my experiences. I think in a lot of ways, long-term solo van life just isn't sustainable. Don't get me wrong, 
I stand by all the things I've said about how wonderful the lifestyle is in my previous videos, but as social creatures, I just don't think we're really cut out for life alone. Over the last almost four years of adventures with Inez, I realized how easy it is to take the stability of a more normal way of living for granted. To have your community of people around you and to have the stability of a home base is such a privilege. Though life on the road is punctuated by many incredibly beautiful moments, more often than not, solo van life is a constant string of problems that need to be solved. Where will I sleep? Where will I get water? What will I do if it rains for another three days? Where am I going to do my laundry? It comes with so many additional responsibilities, questions, and stressors, and simultaneously alienates you from those you deeply connect with. I think this is why so many van dwellers end up hanging around cities. They're trying to get their necessary dose of connection and stability, which plays a much more vital role in our mental health than we give it credit for. For me, it was even a little bit more complicated because, you know, you take this game that's already kind of rigged against you, and then you throw on top of it all of these ambitious things that you want to accomplish. You know, just compressing your life into 56 square feet drastically increases the amount of friction you experience between tasks. Like recording voiceover, for example. Recording voiceover used to be like this big ordeal because I had to like find a quiet place to park and then I had to set up the table and then I had to set up the computer and then I had to set up the stand and then I had to put the microphone on it and I had to put the pop shield on it and I had to run the cables to the computer and then I had to run the cables to the headphones and then I could start to record the voiceover only to realize that in the middle of my recording, an ice cream truck shows up. And it didn't just drive past, it just pulled up and it's been sitting there for like the last 15 minutes. And I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but I can hear it clearly through the microphone and the headphones and it's definitely registering on my voiceover and it's just... Over and over. Get out of here. Finally, good riddance. Oh. Bye. Yep, now I just do this. Something that used to take over 30 minutes sometimes done in the swing of an arm. And that's just a glimpse into the friction that you experience in a van. Over the last year, the van started to feel like a bit of a trap. Less of a liberation, more of a prison, which is the opposite of how I wanted to feel about it because I love that thing, you know? I spent a lot of blood, sweat, and time making it. So when I felt that way, I knew it was time for a change. And now moving back into a house, I've gotten a new perspective on the lifestyle I was pursuing and the way that it's impacted me long-term. One of the things that you don't expect when starting a van life chapter is this feeling of not belonging, you know, picture yourself, you know, inside your van, in a new city, surrounded by people, but no one knows you, no one really wants you there, but you are there. And this feeling of not belonging has permeated even into this next chapter of my life, and it's something that I'm actively working on. But it just goes to show that something that starts out as a big adventure over the long run can have long lasting effects on your mental health. Now, am I saying that if I could go back in time and forego doing the van, that I would choose that course? No. This has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's made me who I am today, and it's been one of my greatest adventures, and it's gonna continue to be. I have over 10,000 miles of road trips planned for this year, and I'm excited to say that I'm genuinely looking forward to them. So I guess my life is not going to be as regular and orderly as Gustave Flaubert proposes, but I don't know if I want it to be. Honestly, I can say I've never been busier, and my life seems more complicated now than it's ever been, but this is a balance I can get excited about, and a direction that I'm here for. I want to offer a great, deep, genuine thank you for you guys for being here, and for caring about what I have to share. This makes it all worth it. Um, I have a lot of really exciting things that I planned and I can't wait to share them with you guys. I love you so much. Thank you. And I'll see you next time.